Telemedicine and urgent care were made for each other. Uh, you know, we could do most of what we need to do, except for, you know, sewing up a laceration or something like that, can be done over telemedicine with a camera. So uh, we saw a, a, a huge uptick in, in, uh, in, in telemedicine, sorry, uh, in telemedicine uptake. Uh, we saw upwards of uh, 200,000 visits over a few months time, which was uh, amazing when, when the volume in the offices dropped off. Uh, it really took off on the telemedicine side. And uh, we were, and, uh, like I'd mentioned early on, we were trying out telemedicine. We didn't know what uh, the uptake would be, and we were concerned about uh, impacting our net promoter scores. And because in person and over, over a device are two different things. But we found that, that the, the younger families that are, are in our sweet spot now, uh, they love the technology. I, I think they would probably rather come in uh, rather use the telemedicine than, than really come in. Because uh, a lot of times uh, it's a quick question, uh, there's a bump or a bruise or a rash, and they wonder, do I come in, do I not come in? And uh, this younger generation really feels that, let me just snap a, a, a quick visit and, uh, and check something out. And, and we found during our surveys, a surprising number of our customers would not have come in if it wasn't for telemedicine because they didn't think it was either serious or they didn't have the time or they have four kids that have to drag into the office. So there's definitely a niche for telemedicine. Uh, but unfortunately we have to overcome, you know, some of the challenges is reimbursement, uh, credentialing across the country. We're, we're not there yet. Uh, a lot of rules were relaxed and hopefully those rules will stay relaxed and there'll be some legislation to really help this, uh, uh, this new technology take off.